Welcome to Web Systems, Week 8, Computer Science 2, Introduction to Logic. As IT people, we need to understand logic and mathematics. And you'll find that in some ways, Boolean logic is the core of many functionality that you actually do in programming, or even trying to think logically. So you need to learn how to write expressions. They're called logical, meaning computer logic, not logic as in uh, philosophy. And you need to understand the concept of similarity. So if two logical expressions are the same, they could look different, they could mean the same thing. And we do this because of we try to be efficient in, in computing. And also the fact that computers only understand two states, true or false, one and zero in binary. We call the system Boolean logic simply because it was developed by a guy called George Bull in 1854. So here's some examples. We do intuitively understand logic anyway. For example, this is a lecture, or this is 1942. Obviously that's true. This is a lecture, and it's 1942. Well, this is true, and this is false. What does it mean to me? Obviously being false, and that's true. It probably means that it's only actually true in 1942. So we can't time travel. So it's obviously false. Let's try the simple statement. This year is 1942. Hmm, that's definitely false. And it's not 1942. In other words, this year is not 1942. You'd have to write this as this. Another way of looking at negation. And obviously that statement is true, unless it happens to be 1942. Let's look at another example. The, we'll look up the UTS handbook next. Let's take a look at one of your final year subjects. 31272, Project Management Professionals. Now this is the prerequisites, the subjects you need to complete before you can take this final year subject. And if you look at the requisites, it's something really complicated. For example, business requirements, modeling, and introduction information systems, and open bracket, something, something, something and certain number of credit points in a whole bunch of stuff. Not exactly very clear, including antirequisites. So if you've done engineering project management, you can't do project management. A lot of things to see in this list. So how can we use this? How can we use logic to break this down to something a bit simpler? Well, we can look at the conditions. Let's go down to the axis conditions. And this breaks it into a slightly easier to read format, where it says the antirequisites, which you can't have done, is 1 and 2 and 3, which happens to be project management, project management, project management. And the requisites now become different sets of rules. Rule 1 and 2 and 3, or 3A, and 4 or 4 or 4, J and K. So let's take a look at these conditions. Just page down so you can view it. So the rule is quite simple. It's simply saying that you can you have to do one. So one happens to be you must do business requirements modeling. You must do number two, which is information systems, and you have to do one of these two, one or the other. Then you have to do number four, which is four or for A, B, C, D. So you have to do one of these conditions, which is this list here, one of these. In other words, you have to do a certain amount of credit points in your degree, or you had to do the industrial experience subject, or 72 credit points in the BIT, or 78 in all the other ones. Relatively simple rule. It's actually only four rules that you need to complete, and you need to complete all four rules. And now let's take a look at logic in more detail. You notice I mentioned the words and, or, and not. In English language, they mean the same thing. And meaning both must be true, or meaning one or the other is true, and not, which means the opposite. And these are called Boolean functions. Okay, key thing, Boolean functions. And there's one more operation we will look at later called the XOR, or the exclusive OR, also known as the language or English OR. 
So I mentioned a thing called Boolean operations and Boolean functions. Effectively, every Boolean operation has inputs and outputs, okay, except for the not, which has one input. And essentially, you have these two inputs. I'll call it input um, A and B, for example. They have some magic operation, and you have an output, C. So what do we stick in? comes out. Two operations, something magically happens, and we get an output occurring. It's a bit easier sometimes to draw these operations. It's what we call a truth table. It's basically a matrix or spreadsheet, whatever you like to call it. And you literally say the word true or false to indicate what the results are. We also tend to think of true as one and false as zero. So here's the truth table for AND. Basically it says if A and B are true, then the output becomes whatever this output is, which happens to be false. So if it's true and false, the answer is false. If it's false and true, the answer is false. And if it's true and true, the answer is true. So in the case of an AND operation, we only ever end up with a single true output. The option is a bit different. Oh, you can also put, sorry, my apologies. You can say 0, 0 as the equivalent of false, and 1 as the equivalent of true, and it's the same result that comes out. Or table looks slightly different. Unlike the AND operation, only one of the results is true. In this particular case, all the results are true except unless the inputs are false. So it's effectively saying, as long as anything has a true in it somewhere, the answer is always going to be true. Okay? Um, Negation is quite easy. If it's false, it becomes true. If it's true, it becomes false. It's called a negative operation. And the XOR is an unusual one. Unlike the other OR operation, the single difference is if both are true, the answer becomes false. That's why it's called an exclusive OR. It's like the English OR statement. It's either red or black. You're either male or female. It's either true or false. But under the covers, it's equal to this magic operation. Notice it's a compound operation now. We've got an OR, we've got an AND, we've got a NOT, and another AND, and we're using brackets as well. Now, computing is always full of logic, especially, for example, Java, which hopefully you've started to look at at this stage. Boolean variables are simply a type of variable in a programming language that's only got two values, true or false. And internally, it may be represented as 0 and 1, but do not ever assume that. Here's an example. In Java, if you see this ampersand, double ampersand, is equivalent to AND, and the broken bar, the vertical bar, two of those, there's not a 1, it's not an L, it's the vertical bar, two of those is equal to the OR statement, and exclamation mark is the NOT operation. Different languages have different rules. Be very, very careful. Do not use the single ampersand or the single broken bar symbol because they have a slightly different meaning. They are called bit masks, which we won't really talk about in this course. Here's an example of Java code. And let's try out these examples. OK, I've got x equal to 1 and y equal to 2. So let's try out the logic. What's p equal to? p, x is greater than 1. Now, x is 1, so obviously that's false. Is y greater than 1? Let's check. y, that's 2, is greater than 1. This becomes true. So p effectively becomes false or true. And when you do an or, oh, I like the word fort, that becomes true. So P is true. Let's try to see what the value of Q is. Is X greater than 1? No, greater than 4? Obviously not. That's false. Is Y less than 5? Is Y less than 5? Well, Y is 2. Obviously, that's true. So Q becomes... I should have used a lowercase q, my apologies, becomes false and true. And we have a false and a true. The answer is always going to be false. Simple chunk of logic there. So 
it may be really annoying typing in these alls, ands, not symbols. Like programming languages, you can also write it in a simpler format. For example, when we say x times y plus z becomes xy plus z, with logic it's the same thing. So we have a not x and y or z. When you have a not, one way of doing it is to put an x as a capital and a lowercase y. You could say x and lowercase y or or can be represented as a plus and z. Okay, that's one we're looking at. We've got don't forget the brackets. It's important to keep that in mind. However, you can also get rid of that lower that ampersand by simply saying x dot y, the implicit dot plus z. You can also and that also becomes x y plus z. Okay. Instead of that x, you can also do another way. X can also be represented as x little bar on top. That funny little bar means not. Downside to this, that also looks like an average. It also looks like, for example, something you can't type into a normal keyboard. That's why we tend to use capital X's for this. Quick way of writing it down. You can also write it as, um, oh, I've just shown you this. You can also get rid of brackets because the thing called associativity and has a greater priority than all. Just like multiplication has a greater priority than addition. So that's where this not x and y can be rewritten as not x and y without the brackets. And then we just simply automatically get shape convert that to x and y. Okay, be very careful. It looks like arithmetic. In other words, and looks like multiplication. And or looks like plus. But of course, it's not necessarily true because if you have 1 plus 1 does not equal to 2. In fact, it's equal to 1. So just be careful about that. Um, you can also represent things in other ways. A common thing is and is represented as a dot, or this funny at hap symbol. Or is represented as a V, or a plus. And not sometimes has this broken bar character, which we won't find on most normal keyboards, so we use an exclamation mark instead. Be careful, certain languages have different representations as well.